This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this uh, Premier by Bullet model number 30 RIPR. Okay. So I'm on the door side of the trailer, walking towards the rear. And this is an outside kitchen. You also have a TV out here. Uh, 100 and 110 volt AC refrigerator that you're going to uh, that, that will actually as soon as you plug your trailer on it turns it on so there's no switch for it you got some storage and a workspace here all right uh, you've got a swing out grill bracket okay and right here let's see if I can show you it's kind of hard to see let me get down here right there is your quick connect for uh, LP line to hook to your grill okay make sure you turn it on there's a little valve on the side okay so let's work you, while, we're, while we're here you have a scissor type stabilizers they take a three-quarter inch uh, crank or three-quarter inch uh, socket attachment on a drill is what most people use these days all right so you got a big long or wide power awning with LED strip some power here this is your water heater. Okay, works both gas and electric. The drain for it is right here, so you know. The switches to operate it are inside. I'll show you that when we get in there. All right, so um, this this is your crank right here for your your uh, stabilizers, and this is the hose to hook up your grill. Okay, it's got a quick connect on it also. This end goes on the grill. That end goes into the fitting that I showed you under the rear of the trailer, the rear corner area. Okay. Two LP tanks. Deep cycle marine battery. This is your water fill station here. Uh, you, generally speaking, you're going to use city water, which is just... You're going to hook the hose up here, turn up the faucet on, and you're ready to go. It's all pressurized, ready to go. If you go to a, a campsite that doesn't have plumbing on the campsite, you can fill your fresh water tank up in advance, right here. You can fill it right there, and then you have an electric pump inside to pump the water. So everything will work just like you have city water, okay? This is a outside shower for kids and dogs and feet and bicycles and whatever else you want to hose down. Okay, now these are your valves here. That one is your gray tank valve. Gray tank is sink and shower water. That is your black tank valve there. Toilet water and waste. So your hose goes right on here, goes into the dump station. Then you're going to pull your black valve. You just pull it out. It's a gate valve. You pull it out and it'll dump. Let me see if he, he might have some water in here because he was water testing it a little bit. So let me get those clear. Okay, so... Um, you always pull the black first, and then the gray. The obvious reason is that the black water is is dirtier water than the gray water, so the gray water will help clean your hose out a bit. And then you can come over here. This is a black tank flush. So you can hook the hose at the dump station right onto there, and you can turn it on. Just make sure, like it says here, you have the black tank valve open. That valve right there. You want it open before you turn on the water, okay? This is just the service panel for your refrigerator. This hose right here for is for condensation. It should be hanging out like that so it drains to the outside. That's just your uh, um, your uh, furnace vent. I'm looking down here as I, as I speak. I'm distracting myself here. And you've got a second gray tank here. This was probably a galley tank it's called, but either way, it's a gray tank to hold sink and or shower water. So you have two grays and one black. This type of slide out, so you know, is a uh, accu slide. If anybody ever asks you, you've got a uh, power cord, which is either this one is either 25 or 30 feet long. It looks like a oh no, it's a 30 footer. It says right there. So uh, it's 30 amp. You have a reducer now to reduce this down uh, to a regular 15 amp household plug. But keep in mind, you can't run the air conditioner on 15 amps, so it'll eventually pop a circuit breaker if you don't uh, if you try to run your air conditioner at home all right so let's go inside
Okay, here we go. This is your monitor panel right here. So you can see your battery is charged. They all lit up. Your fresh water has water in it, but it, we will drain it because they're winterizing it, or winter, or excuse me, dewinterizing and water testing it. Your black is now empty because uh, we just dumped it. Your first gray tank is empty. The second one is empty also. So we're still going to dump, dump your fresh water tank. Um, to, to light your furnace, or I'm sorry, uh, to light your hot water heater, all right, you're going to light it like this on gas. To run it on electric, you're just going to go like that. Always make sure there's water in the tank before you use that, okay? I mentioned that you could pump your own water. That's right here. Uh, your awning switch is right here. You're just going to extend it. You roll it out until you see um, the awning tube, all right? So you see there's the light on it. You roll this out so you can see the awning tube. That's how you know you're all out all the way. It goes out eight feet. Um, never leave it out unattended. Uh, if you're not going to be at the campsite, you want to you want to uh, send it back in so you don't get uh, damaged by the wind. All right, because the the wind can damage it in an instant. So you really want to keep it in unless you're at the campsite. And these are just slide room one and two out. Okay. While I'm standing here, this is the carbon monoxide and LP gas detector. It should always be green like that. If it goes off, you want to go outside, take your family out. Shut the gas off at the front and then figure out what's going on, okay? This is just your uh, thermostat, so you hit it once to light it up, then you can scroll through. That's the fan, air conditioner, furnace, and off. There is a lag time every time you select a source, uh, so give it a good five seconds or so before it's going to react to you. It's, it, it takes a, a, a little bit of time, but it will kick in or shut off for that matter. The fan that I, they speak of is just the air conditioner running without the compressor. All right. So this is a gas absorption refrigerator. So that means it'll run on 110 AC or LP gas. So you turn it on just like that. Auto, if you can see that turn on there. Auto means electric. The reason they call it auto is because it always seeks out electricity. It'll automatically select electricity if you can find it. If it can, it'll automatically go to gas. Or if you have a power failure at the campground and you're running on electricity, it'll automatically switch over to gas so you don't spoil the food, all right? You can run it dedicated to gas just like that. If this check light ever comes on, it means it faulted, it didn't light, so you would just turn it off and on again to let it run through the cycle, okay? Very simple. The only other thing to know about this refrigerator is this thing is called a thermistor. You see the wire going up to that clip on that on the fin there? Uh, you want it up as high as it goes. The higher you go with it, the cooler it is. So you can see the sticker shows you that, higher, cooler. So unless it's getting cold outside, you're going to have it up all the way. Okay. Of course, your table folds down onto these cleats here. And you can turn it into a bed. Uh, you have two theater seats. And then you have a, a tri-fold hide-a-bed. So you got, you're just going to pull it up from down here. Pull it out, put the legs down, and then fold the back section down. Um, it's all foam, so it's actually a halfway decent bed. It's not like the uh, uh, the old type with the bar and the springs in your back and everything. This is fairly comfortable. So, all right. So over here is your entertainment area, your radio and disc player. This plays DVDs and CDs. You can stream off this USB right here, so you could put a USB drive in there and take all your favorite albums with you. Uh, you can hook up wirelessly with Bluetooth and play the MP3s off your phone or your tablet. Um, it has two zones, zone one and zone two. Zone one is in the trailer, two is outside of the trailer. So it does a lot of things, uh, everything you need for camping anyway. Of course, the, and the TV works like any other TV. You have to strap it into place because uh, the bracket swings out. Keep that in mind. All right. The microwave works like any other microwave. The range hood, it's just fan and light. Okay. Now you're, I don't know if the gas is turned on, so I might just have to talk you through it, but you're going to turn the gas on, and then this is a sparker here, you're going to turn it clockwise. So it looks like, oh no, it's on, so right there, you got gas. So you can do that for the three different burners. Now to light the oven is a little different. The, down here, all the way in the back, you can't quite see it, but there's a pilot light back there. So you need a grill light or something with a long neck on it. That, <clears throat> excuse me. And then you're just going to turn this to pilot and depress it. You hold it in, 
Then you'll go down there with your lighter, you'll light the pilot light down there. After it lights, you're still holding this in. And after it lights, you'll hold it for another 10 or 15 seconds to heat it up. Then you go to whatever temperature you want. It'll cycle on and off like an oven does. But when you shut it off, uh, the flame will go out, obviously, but so does the pilot light. So you have to relight the pilot light each time. All right. And you should always travel with this down or it will break. All right. So this device here is the power converter. This converts 110 AC down to 12 volt DC. Okay. So basically you have regular household circuit breakers on this side and they're all labeled. Some things have to run on AC power like the air conditioner or the microwave, that sort of thing. And then the power is converted down to 12 volt DC over here. You have uh, 12 volt fuses and they're all labeled. If any of these fuses were ever to blow, you actually can see it, they'll light up and you can be able to see it through this tinted plastic here. Um, and one other function is that it, it will keep your battery charged. As long as you're plugged in to shore power, it'll keep your battery charged up. So it's a battery charger also, kind of a battery tender actually. All right, so the bathroom. <clears throat> shower works like any other shower the sink works like any other sink now this GFCI keep in mind that all the plugs in this trailer all the receptacles are wired through the GFCI so even if you're using the plug on the outside let's say with a coffee pot or something and it pops you're gonna reset it in here because all the plugs are run through the GFCI okay now the toilet the main thing to remember about the RV toilet is you can't use it dry or without chemical so the first thing you do you get to the campground you hook up your water and your power uh, the flush pedal is right here. Okay, so you're just going to step on it, and because the water's hooked up, water will be swirling out like this. The black tank is directly below. All right. So what you do is you'll take your chemical, a dose of whatever chemical you use, you put it right in the toilet, and then you'll step on the pedal, and water will come swirling out. You put about a gallon or two of water in there. There's no way to tell that from the monitor panel. You just use common sense. Ah, that's about a gallon or two right there. Okay. So the bottom line is, like I said, you have to have chemical and water in it before you use it. Uh, you'll do that each time. If you're going to camp after you've dumped the black tank, you'll come in here and put the chemical in and a gallon or so of water. All right. And uh, last but not least, this is a um, uh, escape window. I just want to show you how it works. Basically, you push that through and you push it all the way through. Then you're going to grab hold of this red tab. It'll pull the screen out and then out you go. Now, I just want to show you right here. Uh, when you winterize, you have to use your water pump to pump antifreeze through the system. You're going to remove these screws here and your water pump is under there with a winterizing kit. All right. Also, keep in mind that you have to bypass the water heater. Uh, you can't pump antifreeze into the system. So if you're going to do it yourself, you have to learn how to use the bypass valves on the back of the water heater. Uh, it's very important because if you, if you get antifreeze in that water tank, the hot water tank will leave a foul taste and a foul smell that just will not go away. So you have to do that. Um, another thing, you have to inspect the roof of this trailer and every other trailer three times a season. So you figure in the spring and in the fall and once in the middle of the summer, you're going to go up on the roof. You can walk up there no problem. If you can't do it yourself, have somebody else do it or take it into a shop and have it done. But you're going to look at all the sealant. Um, there's a, uh, every, every attachment and molding is sealed with a lap sealant called Dicor. So you're going to look and you're going to look for separation or cracking starting. You may go up there for years and never see anything. You may go up in a year from now and, and see something that has to be touched up. So it's important to inspect it. You have to inspect your roof. That's every trailer you have to inspect the roof so uh, that's very important all right okay so basically I think that covers it um, there's a uh, plenty of online information uh, there's plenty of manufacturers videos even if you were to go to dicor.com d-i-c-o-r that's who makes the roofing materials and uh, and uh, sealant they'll have videos on resealing for example so there's tons of stuff to you can learn from that Plus, every appliance in here has a manual that comes with the trailer. Uh, they're all in that packet on the table there, if you could see that far. So, um, just make sure you bypass your water heater and make sure you inspect your roof and you'll be, you'll be in good shape. So, thank you very much for purchasing your trailer from National RV Detroit and thanks for your time.